What is one key touch? Is it worth the money? Is it a good choice for you? How does it work? These are the questions that I will address in this video. I will give you my review of this device and I will take you step by step through the setting up process. As a cryptocurrency investor, one of the most crucial decisions you will make is how to secure your digital assets. With the ever increasing threat of mismanagement of exchanges, highlighted especially by the collapse of FTX, one of the biggest crypto exchanges, just several months ago. And also hacking and other cyber attacks that are targeting custodial wallets all the time. It is essential to find a reliable and secure way to store your coins. That's why hardware wallets have become increasingly popular with crypto users, offering a secure way to store your private keys offline and away from prying eyes. I've already reviewed all of the most popular hardware wallets here on this channel and today I want to talk about the One Key Touch, a next generation cold storage wallet that offers advanced secure features to protect your digital assets. If you're looking for a secure and user-friendly way to manage your crypto then this device could be the perfect fit. Let's find out. In this video, I'm sharing my expert review of the One Key Touch, detailing its features, security, and usability. So, without further ado, let's get started and see if the One Key Touch is worth your money. Welcome back to my channel. This is Crypto Corner, the video podcast where we talk everything crypto related to expand your knowledge of cryptocurrencies and to help you navigate safely in the crypto space. Today's episode is a bit longer, so use the timestamps in the description below to skip any of the parts that you might already be familiar with. I will do a quick review of the device first, then I will do the unboxing and setting up. I will take you step by step through the process so you can see how to use this device so let's dive in. The One Key Touch is a hardware wallet, a physical device that is connected to a computer or mobile phone and it uses a secure chip to store your seed phrase and private keys. This means that your seed phrase and private keys are never exposed to the internet making it much more secure than storing your coins on an exchange or in a software wallet. A common misconception about wallets is that they store your crypto. It's not quite true. The wallet itself doesn't store your tokens or coins. These are always stored on the relevant blockchains. And any hardware wallet only generates and stores the seed phrase and private keys offline in a secure chip, ensuring that they are not exposed to the internet, isolating network risks. The One Key Touch is a 3.1 inch multi-touch true color IPS display, joining the new era in code storage wallets, transitioning from buttons to touch screens. The device can store over a thousand cryptocurrencies. That still doesn't mean all cryptocurrencies, but at least all of the big ones and their tokens. A mobile phone app is the way to navigate the device and it has a clean and easy interface. I have no critiques on that. As for the security, which is the most important aspect to any code wallet, one of the key security features of the One Key Touch is the use of a secure element. This specific type of secure chip can store and process sensitive information securely, ensuring that the private keys are kept safe from hackers and other cyber criminals. By storing private keys offline, the One Key Touch makes it much harder for hackers to steal users' coins. This device uses a dual chip architecture, including a microprocessor chip for communicating and data transfer and a secure chip for offline seed phrase and private key generation and storage, as well as transaction signing. This was also the case with their other devices and the One Key Classic is the one that I reviewed a couple of months ago when I was in Vietnam. You will find my review in the description below and it will also pop up at the end of this video if you want to check it out. The One Key Touch is also designed with a range of security features to help users protect their digital assets in the case of the device being lost or stolen. This includes a PIN code and a recovery phrase which can be used to recover lost private keys. 
One of the features that sets this device apart from the competition is its ability to display NFTs. I have featured other NFT wallets here on this channel like the SecuX Nifty, but in this case, with the one key touch, you actually have a fully functional wallet that supports way more blockchains and on top of that come the NFTs and the ability to view these assets directly on the device provides a new level of security and convenience for users. Additionally, the one key touch is the world's first hardware wallet with with multi-touch technology and true color display. But why is using a cold storage wallet so important? The answer is simple, security. With cryptocurrencies, the owner of the private key is the owner of the assets. If someone gains access to your private key, they can transfer or steal all of your digital assets in an instant. Cold storage wallets are not connected to the internet, making them much less vulnerable to cyber attacks and other security threats. They store private keys offline, providing an extra layer of security. And this device has several features that make it stand out in the market of cold storage wallets for cryptocurrencies. One of these being the multi-currency management capability. This means that users can manage different types of cryptocurrencies in one device without the need to switch between different wallets. Wallets. This feature not only saves time, but also reduces the risk of errors and potential security threats that could arise from using multiple wallets. It's a feature I really like. Another feature that sets the one key touch apart is its integration with popular cryptocurrency trading platforms such as Binance for instance or Huobi and OKX. This integration allows users to easily transfer their assets to and from their trading accounts without compromising their security, a really important feature. The One Key Touch has a durable and sleek design that is made with high quality materials. The device has a metal casing and comes with a protective case to ensure that it stays safe from scratches and other damage. It also has a built-in rechargeable battery which can last up to several weeks on a single charge. It's also compatible with a range of third-party software, including Metamask, Electrum, Exodus. This makes it easier for users to manage their digital assets and to take advantage of different services and platforms in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. So this capability with third-party software is a key feature that makes it a great choice for anyone looking for a secure and user-friendly way to manage your digital assets. For example, users can use the one key touch to securely store their private keys offline while still being able to access their digital assets through third-party software like Metamask or Exodus. Another thing that I really like is that, like with the previous model, the OneKey Classic that I already reviewed, this is an open source hardware wallet, which means that its source code is publicly available for anyone to view, test, modify and even distribute. This is a good thing because it allows users to verify the security and integrity of the device's software, ensuring that there are no hidden vulnerabilities or backdoors that could be exploited by hackers. Also. Open source software is usually more transparent and trustworthy than closed source software, as it allows users to see exactly how the software works and what it does. This can be especially important for a hardware wallet as it is designed to store and protect users' digital assets. Overall, the fact that the One Key Touch is open source is a positive feature that adds to its overall security and transparency. And lastly, the One Key Touch comes with a user-friendly mobile app that allows users to manage their digital assets remotely. This app includes features such as price tracking and portfolio management, making it a convenient tool for cryptocurrency investors. So with that said, let's move on to the step-by-step -step guide. I will do the unboxing first, then I will show you how to set it up and how to use it. So stay tuned or use the timestamps to skip any of the steps that you are already familiar with okay time to open the box so the first thing that we need to pay attention to are these stickers here these indicate that the device is brand new that it's not been opened before it's not been touched or tampered with so if any of these stickers is damaged then this could be a red flag but in my case they are perfectly intact okay so i'm going to peel them off and now i'm ready to open the box and of course we first have a few cards marketing cards a nice hold your own key message here 
they have that with all of their devices. And a reminder to never import your seed phrase that is generated from a hardware wallet into a soft wallet, into an online wallet. We then have this green envelope here and um, inside is the getting started. It is a very simple guide actually. I will guide you properly. You will see far more steps in my guide than what you will find here. But of course, this is here for you to use. Then we have the device, which again, very compact and everything. And we have the mnemonic phrase cards. These are the paper cards. And uh, this is where you're going to be writing your mnemonic phrase for a start. You are much better off getting a metal plate for this, whether the titanium by one key or one of the other ones that are available on the market. I have reviewed a few of them, but um, definitely do not store your uh, mnemonic phrase or seed phrase into your uh, computer or on a file, on a USB, whatever. You know, any of those options are not safe, are not good enough because your computer can get compromised your USB can get compromised or lost or anything, so uh, definitely use these cards. You have three of them. Uh, you can either use the three of them for the same mnemonic phrase and just uh, place it in different places, in different houses. If you have more than one house, maybe your parents' house, whatever. Or um, if you have different, uh, if you want to set up different wallets with the same device, which you can do with different mnemonic phrases, then you can use these three cards for different accounts, basically. All right, and this is the device. It comes wrapped up, very well wrapped up with this sticker here. Again, this is also showing that the device has not been tampered with, that has not been opened before. And uh, if you don't have that sticker, if, you're, if you don't have all of that wrapping and everything, then you can get suspicious and you can contact one key first before you start setting it up or anything else. And lastly, there is the USB cable. All right, well, now we're ready to start the setting up process. So I'm going to show you exactly what it is step by step. Of course, first I'm going to remove this sleeve here. And uh, the stickers again are just pointing towards the fact that this is a brand new device and it's not been opened before. Let's power it up. I mean, I haven't charged it. It comes with a little bit of a charge, so hopefully that will be enough to do the setting up. If not, I will charge it. The first thing, of course, is to select the language. I'm selecting English and I'm creating a new wallet. I'm not going to set it up as a previous device. I'm going to set it up as a brand new wallet. So let's click here. And I'm prompted that there will, I will be creating a brand new seed phrase. I will need to make a note of that and I'm fine with that. I can select here 12, 18 or 24 words. Typically, I use 24 words for all of my wallets or the ones that allow me to have 24. For this tutorial, I will use the 12 just because it's gonna make things quicker and easier. But uh, usually when I'm setting it up later for myself, I will use the 24 words option. And I'm going to enable pin protection, of course. Okay, now I will select an uh, easy pin just for now, just for the tutorial. Again, I will be selecting a much more difficult pin for my real usage. I will go for one, two, three, four. And uh, here I see that they're not being scrambled. We will check later if uh, it's going to show me the numbers scrambled. Okay, the wallet is ready. Now let's back it up. I need to confirm that I know about all of the risks. Never take photo or make digital copies. I mean, I sometimes make digital copies, but I keep them on an external hard drive that is not, I'm not connecting it to the internet. I don't use it very much. It's just a safer storage, but it is not the best option. The best option is of course to back them up more securely. And uh, this is what I will be using later on. This is called key tag. It is basically metal plates where you can write your security phrase, your backup, you know, mnemonic phrase is actually what it's called. And um, this way it is indestructible because typically we use paper storage for this. You know, we write them on paper, but paper, you know, fire or water damage is not great. So definitely I will do a separate video. Make sure that you catch that one where I will review and I will explain how to use these as well. 
I, I already use other metal plates with other wallets that I have. I've already reviewed the SecuX metal plates as well. These are even better. They're really small, very light and uh, much easier to actually use. So anyways, let's go to the backup. Now I can see here the 12 words. If you're using 24, then you're not gonna see all of them in one page, you will be scrolling. Here, I can see all of them in one page. And of course, because I'm showing them to you on screen, I will not be using this. I will be resetting the wallet and I will be setting it up as a new device after this video. So this seed phrase is not going to be used. Now I need to write this down. And when I have them ready, I will go continue because if I continue right now, it will ask me to confirm this phrase. It's asking me for my word one. So I need to have it written down. Okay, so let's continue. I have them written down. The first one was traffic. The second one is purity. All right, the third one is foster, harsh. As you can see here, you actually have to confirm them one by one. Uh, some wallets would only ask you for three of your words and they will be in random numbers. So it might ask you for your 12th worth, then your sixth, then your third or something like that. And uh, it's not going to be in order. But as you confirm this, you are already confirming that you have them all written. In this case, because I don't actually have to type anything, they are asking for all of these words. So my sixth word is cream. And then next one is horn. Next one is horn. And the last one is wise. And we are done. It's verified. Okay, let's go continue. Backup with key tag. It's actually asking me to do that. It's reminding me that this is the best way. And of course, I will do that later on. I will do another video, as I said. Not now. Okay, I'm skipping the backup. But that's not something you want to do. Make sure that you don't skip the backup. I'm only doing it because I am showing you how to set it up. But of course, I will be doing all of these steps properly when I'm setting it up for myself. And now the last step is to download the application. I already have it on my computer from my previous tutorial for the classic and uh, I will be using that same application. So with that, this is the setting up process. It's complete. Now, what I can show you here is that, of course, the next thing is to add accounts and I will show you how to do that. But for that, I will also need the application. From this point on, this is pretty much everything that you need to do with the device in terms of setting up. The rest is done with the application. So I will have to go into my computer screen and show you all of that. Now here you can go into the settings and let's have a quick look what we have here. We have general settings and that is the auto lock currently set at 10 minutes. I might want to do it something shorter like 5 minutes or 2 minutes. Um, then we have the language is English, brightness, I can actually change the brightness from here, which is great. So if, uh, you know, the battery is low or something, I can reduce the brightness or I can make it higher. Like that. So let's say 75 is probably decent enough. Um, I have vibration and haptic keyboard haptic. Okay, this is good. This is basically going to uh, point out when I'm typing so that I know if I'm pressing the buttons or not. Then I have animations and uh, these are on by default. I am not going to change that. And then we have a lock screen. Uh, tap the lock screen to wake. Yeah, that's good enough for me. I'll keep it as that. And the shutdown is in 10 minutes. So if I don't use the device for about 10 minutes, it's going to just turn off to save battery. Okay, this is all good. These are the general settings. Then the connect settings, I can uh, turn off or turn on the Bluetooth from here. Uh, if you're going to be using it with your mobile phone, then you need the Bluetooth to be on, right? On computer, you can connect it via the cable. This is the USB-C cable, so you can use that. There is a USB-C cable that comes with the device, but I will be using it with Bluetooth with my phone just because it's easier. Okay, what else we have? Home screen. I can actually choose different types of home screen. I like this one, the wallpaper, so I'm gonna set this one up. Then we have security and uh, here we have a pin. And this is where I can actually select the pin to come as randomized numbers. So instead of all the numbers following the number, one, two, three, four, five, six, they can actually be scrambled. So if I am going to be using it in front of other people, 
I don't really want them to uh, be able to recognize what my pin is. But as I'm using it just for myself here in my house right now, I will keep it at default. Randomized is good for if you're using it out and about. The USB lock is also something that you can use here. Uh, the device will remain unlocked when the USB is plugged or unplugged. I'm not going to change this for the moment, but this is just an extra step of security. You can do that from here. You can change your pin. And of course, first you will have to confirm your pin. So if you already forgot your pin, you're not going to be able to change it from here. Uh, what you can do is if you actually forget your pin is just wipe out the device and set it up again with your seed phrase. With the same seed phrase, this time you're not going to be setting up as a new device, you will set it up as a previous device with your seed phrase and this way you will be able to choose a new pin. But um, from here to change the pin, you will actually have to know your pin already. You cannot just uh, pick a new one. And this is where you're going to reset the device. So. After I finish with this tutorial, I will be using this feature. But actually, uh, if you're locked out of the device because you can't remember your pin, you're not gonna be able to get to this feature. Typically what would happen is you will uh, make an error with your pin a few times, maybe three times or 10 times, I'm not sure. And then it's just going to ask you to reset the device. But if you have another reason to want to reset the device, this is the option here. Okay. And then if we go to wallet from here, you can check your recovery phrase, which is a good thing. I advise you to do that after you set it up, after you write it down and before you add it to your key tag because it's a metal plate. So once you add it there, you're not going to be able to change it. Before you do that, just go and check your recovery phrase one more time, just as an extra security step. I'm not going to do it right now, but you can do it and you can even add a passphrase. So that is on top of the pin, there is also a passphrase, just an extra step of security. I like this feature and usually I have this enabled. This passphrase will be required for you to enter it when you connect it to the application. So this is again, if someone else finds this device, even if they can guess your pin, they will have one more step to deal with, you know, one more hurdle to deal with before they can do anything and it will be that passphrase. And uh, this is everything here you have about the device. So here you can check what is your current firmware. If there is a new firmware that you need to upgrade, at least here you will be able to quickly check and see what is your current version. And developer options is something that I will not be using because I'm not a developer. It's a more advanced feature, so I will not really go into that. Let's power it off. And that's it. It's actually taking some time to shut down. Anyways, now let's move on to how to use it and connect it to the application. All right, so let's connect it to the application. I'm going to be using my desktop application just because it's easier for this tutorial, but you don't have to do that. You can navigate this device directly with the mobile phone app. Just download it to your mobile. Now, as you can see here, I already have the OneKey Classic associated here with this software, with the application. So the next thing for me is uh, to figure out how am I going to connect this device uh, because I will be using the same application to navigate both devices. So let's power it on. I'll have to enter my pin, of course. And uh, luckily I selected a very easy pin for the tutorial. But again, make sure that you're using a difficult pin, not something silly like that okay let's touch here oh another thing i didn't do is go through all of these so i went through the settings but here we also have the user guide and if there's any step that you get stuck and you're not sure what to do you can refer to this user guide although i'm pretty sure that my step-by-step -step guide is going to be clear enough and here is the nft gallery so of course i don't have nfts yet here i will be adding this later right well this is everything now let me make sure that the bluetooth is connected and yes the bluetooth is on now on my computer i'm going to go to the bluetooth and see if i can actually add this device okay so let's go connect it's connected done good and here on the application, I'm gonna click the icon of my OneKey Classic. So 
let's add a wallet uh, connect this is the option that i will be choosing connect hardware wallet let's go for that okay and as you see here it shows up touch 9983 i'm good with that now i'm uh, asked to enter a passphrase because that's the option I selected. As I said, when you connect it to the application in order to navigate, you know, transactions and, and this sort of thing, you will need to enter a passphrase. Now, I will be selecting this for the first time, so I'm choosing that passphrase and I will choose uh, testing here just to make it easier. Let's confirm. It shows me here. The passphrase is testing. All right, so I will confirm it here as well. But, of course, you need to select something more difficult. That goes without saying, all right? Okay. The wallet is ready. Let's go. And there we go. This is everything that we have. Uh, this avalanche is not the main chain. I will first, of course, I will go to Bitcoin first. Uh, I'm mainly using these hardware wallets to store my Bitcoin. I, I want to spread my Bitcoin around many different wallets just for an extra uh, step of security. And of course, I have a lot of Ethereum, so I will be using it with Ethereum and uh, a lot of the Ethereum tokens. But this is it. From here, you actually navigate for the different blockchains and everything. You don't really have to install anything on the device. Unlike uh, Ledger and some other hardware wallets where you actually have to install applications on the actual device in order to be able to access the different uh, blockchains and stuff here, everything is accessed through this application here and uh, nothing is getting installed on the device. The device you only need to approve a transaction. You don't even need it for receiving, even though if I, let's say I want to receive Litecoin, I will make a test with Litecoin because it is the cheapest right now. I mean, the Bitcoin fees went up again. Uh, Ethereum fees are ridiculously high. So I will use it with Litecoin. And in order to receive Litecoin, let's create that Litecoin account. I will go for a nested SegWit. And uh, it's possible that as I pull my address from here to receive it, it might ask me to confirm it on the device. Check address. Yeah, as you see, it shows me the address on the device and I can now compare it with what I'm seeing here on the screen, make sure that it's correct. And then I will send this address to whoever needs to send me Litecoin. In my case, I will be sending the Litecoin. So I will just copy this address and then I will be let's just confirm it let's copy this address and then i will go into my other wallet from where i will be sending litecoin into here let me do that so that you can see after i receive it what do i need to do in order to send because that's the important part receiving it's easy you just have to share your address with someone and they will send you the coins once you have the coins and you need to send them to let's say an exchange or something then you won't really need this device so let me show you all right so i copied this address i sent a little bit of litecoin around eight dollars in here and um, let's find out if i actually received it oh there we go yes 8.16 it's arrived okay perfect so it's 0.1 litecoin so that's a small amount it's, uh, as I said, cheap to transact with Litecoin. It's always been cheap and this is why I like it, especially for this kind of tutorial purposes. Now, the next thing, of course, is to actually send it. Let's say you received the coins in this wallet, you kept them there for a few months or a year or whatever, and now is the time to sell, right? So you want to send it to an exchange. And uh, I mean, you can also use the swap feature directly here if you're going to swap it for another token or something like that. But uh, I would send it to an exchange that I'm using where I can actually place my order, you know, for the desired price that I want and everything. I'm not going to do an instant swap here, but you can do. If you are holding any tokens that are starting to lose value or something and you quickly want to swap them for a different token that has stronger fundamentals and, you know, better outlook for, you know, making you a profit, then you can also just do it here. You don't have to do the whole process of sending it to an exchange and then sending it back, back here. All right, so for this purpose, I need to send. 
um, let me grab the wallet where I'm sending it. I picked a wallet that is empty so that when we receive it, that will be the only balance in that wallet. So it's easy to see that, uh, you know, everything arrived properly and correctly. Okay, so now that I have pasted the address in here, or I can scan, if you're using your mobile phone application, you can use this scan feature here and just scan the QR code of the address that you're sending this into so that you don't have to copy and paste. I mean, it is a little bit easier, but it, it is the same process. Okay, let's go next. And uh, now I will use the maximum amount. So here you can either choose the amount that you're sending, you can use the maximum or you can type manually if it's going to be a different amount that you want to send. In my case, I would just use the maximum because of course, this wallet I would not be using after that. So I need to make sure that it's empty before I reset it. Okay, let's go next. And here I'm prompted to check all the details of this transaction before I confirm it. Uh, this is the fee. If I am not happy with that fee, I can actually change it from here. So by default, it's going for the fast fee, which is uh, about five minutes. And it is slightly, no, it is the same. It is the same as all of the other fees here that I'm seeing, but this is Litecoin. If you are doing this with Ethereum, then the difference between normal to fast fee or rapid even will be uh, much bigger. So with uh, different blockchains, you will have more flexibility. With Litecoin, it's pretty much the same fee because Litecoin is very light. It's easy to transact with. So let's apply the rapid fee just for the sake of this tutorial. And then I have to confirm it on the device. Now this is where the device is really necessary because I cannot do that without the device. I cannot send the money from this account without this device. This is why, uh, you know, hardware wallets are so important and so safe. Let's enter this. Okay. Now I need to confirm the transaction. I can see the transaction here. I can see my wallet address. I can go and check if this is the correct wallet address and especially for larger transactions, I would check it digit by digit, letter by letter. I will not just go for the first three and the last four or something like that. I would go through every single digit here because many times there are phishing and scam attempts that are masking these addresses that do kind of tricks where you are cop when you're copying and pasting sometimes you know things like that have happened in the past where you are pasting something that you just copied and yet there is a malware that manages to change that address and because you are pasting it you don't really check so make sure that you check it manually okay this is the transaction let's continue and I need to slide this in order to sign the transaction. And it's done very quickly. Transaction is submitted. I can click here done. And now I will be waiting here for a little bit until this transaction gets approved. I can go here in history and I will see the transaction. It is still pending. So if it's taking a bit longer and I'm worried about something, I can go into the details of this transaction. If I click here, I will be able to either copy this hash of the transaction and go and check it into any explorer that I want or even if I just click here view in browser that will send me to the coin explorer of Litecoin and I can see here details of this transaction right so as of right now is still unconfirmed so let's wait a few seconds maybe a few minutes until it's confirmed I might have to pause this video wait for this to get confirmed and then I will continue just to show you that how the process went and that everything worked. All right, well, that's it. The transaction shows as confirmed here in the Explorer. It took about two minutes. I post this video for just two minutes and it's now confirmed and uh, I'm getting the notification also here and uh, I will include a screenshot from my wallet so that you can see it on the screen right now. Uh, we can see the details of the transaction. It's received, it's exactly the amount that I sent. So everything worked fine. Perfect. Well, this is it. This is how you receive and how you send transactions. More importantly, how you send from the device, because as you see, without this device, you can't actually sign this transaction. So it cannot be sent. 
this is the best part of this hardware wallet is that you actually need the device. It's not like someone can just take your phone and use the application and do anything because with the application you can only see your balances, you can maybe get your wallet addresses to actually receive tokens in these addresses but you cannot sign a transaction with just the application. You can't do it without the device. All right, well, this was everything for today's video, guys. My review and my step-by-step -step tutorial of the One Key Touch. I hope you like this device as much as I do, and it's gonna serve you well for many years to come. Also, make sure that you catch my next video where I will be showing you how to use the One Key Tag, um, the metal plates. These are titanium plates, and um, I will show you how to use this so that you can have the safest, indestructible storage for your seed phrase because Keeping your seed phrase safe is the most important part. It's actually more important than having the device because even if you lose this device, with that seed phrase, you can pick another device, same model or different, even a different brand, and you can still set it up with that seed phrase and you can still access your accounts. But even if you have this device and you lose your seed phrase, and then something happens to the device, you cannot find that seed phrase to actually set it up again, so you can really lose your funds without that seed phrase. So it is the most important part, more important than the device itself. Make sure that you catch that video. This is everything from me. Again, a reminder to check out the links in the description below where I drop the links to all of the crypto services that I'm using and that I recommend to you. And of course, all the links for this device in particular. And also while you're here, just pick another one of my videos and I'll see you there.